So I'm, so I'm excited to finally see Liam do one of these presentations. I keep hearing that he does these presentations all over the place. This will not be that presentation, actually. And <laughs> something like these ones. I've, I've seen, I, I keep hearing, and I'm excited to finally see one in person. No, I, I, do, uh, I do record those, though, so I have video okay. for a lot of those. Yeah, but that involves me stopping and watching. I know. You never do. So this is Liam Randall. He's one of the partners of Broala, and he is talking about some malware stuff. Uh, hey, everybody. If you haven't started up your VMs yet, go ahead and start them up. I really love uh, hearing Scott and Ashish talk about all the things that they do with Bro because that's what I aspire to do eventually. But I thought it would be important to stop and take a look at some of the things that I commonly see in the field. So these are more of the low-hanging fruits or the, the areas where there's a lot of opportunity for a little bit of code to go a long way. And what I thought we would do is take um, a large number of common malware families and simply replay them through Bro. And it's going to uh, show you some of the things that you may not even be aware that Bro can do for you. Um, so if you can go ahead and just go right to my GitHub here, it's github forward slash liamrandall.com. And you can use the uh, uh, HTTP download, the zip button down over here on the right side of the screen. Uh, when you're ready, uh, go ahead and download that and then uh, change into the directory. Uh, the way I've set this up is I've selected eight samples, seven of which I'd like to go through, and we can pivot back to the eighth if we have time. And we're just going to go ahead and replay uh, these, these uh, samples in Bro and then look at with one, a, a bunch of my demos were completely ruined by the file analysis framework because now it's like, so you run Bro and then you detect it. And that's, that's a little easy. Uh, so that will be the first ones, but as we move down the, down the line, we'll get into some progressively more complicated techniques. We're going to detect things within protocols where Bro has an analyzer, so within the, uh, you know, the parsed fields, and also uh, some C2, of uh, both UDP and TCP, to show that you can use Bro as a detection platform for protocols and problems where you don't even have analyzers. So I don't think that people are aware that Bro is that flexible. Um, tomorrow, I think Seth is speaking about the Intel framework, and you know, with the bringing in the kind of massive atomic indicators like IP addresses and hashes um, that uh, is going to happen with that, in conjunction with Bloom filters especially, um, leaves this whole area out here where there's there's an opportunity to to knock out some of these common malware families. So once you, once you get it downloaded, I thought I would just do a quick little intro and say that I think it's important to think about how you approach these problems. When I'm <coughs> analyzing solutions, I try to use that OODA loop, that observe, orient, detect, decide, and act. Um, and for me personally, what I'd like to do is to replay a sample and start with the meta logs. The first log I'll look at is my capture loss log. How long was the sample? You get a line every 15 minutes. Um, what was the, were there, was it a clean sample? Are there any, are there any errors in it? And then slowly start moving up the stack from there. Start with the con log and then move into my protocol logs doing some summary statistics. I know that we have a large continuum of users here. So for I think some, for the, some, some of the more advanced users, this is going to be a little remedial uh, material. But I did want to make sure to, I think it's important to put your hands on a keyboard, replay some samples, and do some summary statistics, because these are the things that you can take home and deploy in your home network or in your offices starting tomorrow. So uh, once you've got it downloaded, anybody having any troubles with the download? Okay, Seth, would you mind checking over here? Just a little trouble getting downloaded. Okay. Um, uh, first, all of these samples are courtesy, uh, courtesy of uh, Contagio uh, uh, Blogspot. If you don't follow that and you have any interest or any job or you know insecurity, um, uh, Mila does a wonderful job posting samples and um, techniques and analysis. Um, and for me personally, with a very finite amount of time, it's very easy to uh, visit visit the places, get a survey, and in her analysis, I see opportunities to detect in Bro where other tools are falling short. Um, uh, if you uh, need the uh, Git uh, uh, cheat sheet, it is linked here, um, but uh, the HTTPS download should work just fine. Okay, so once you've downloaded, uh, go ahead and change into the first directory, and we can actually do this together on screen. And what you're going to see is, not that. Uh, okay, you're just going to see a PCAP file. 
So what you can do is for each exercise, uh, uh, go to the list of instructions and sort of walk your way through. Um, if you're interested in malware in general, uh, I did link these two uh, uh, shared Google Docs, which if you don't yet have this link, they're the best things ever. They're essentially tables of the current known exploits in each malware family. So if you see a host getting exploited by Java, you can come to this, uh, uh, and you suspect it was a Java exploit, you can come to this table, look, look for you know, the version of Java you're on, see if there's an exploit, and then you can narrow it down to some families. So it can really help you to understand how did these people get into your network to begin with. Uh, so those are just some two background resources if you don't have those. So I'll give everybody a minute to go ahead and um, uh, play, the, play the sample and walk through. And this first one should be really easy. It's almost a duplicate of the file analysis framework the other day, except with real malware. Is anybody having any trouble getting the uh, replaying bro? So this is one of those scripts that comes enabled by default in Bro 2.2. It also comes enabled by default in Security Engine and was available in Bro 2.1. So if you look, there's, there's two different ways to replay here. With a, there's a subtle little difference between these two lines. In the first one, I'm just calling bro-r and then the pcap file. And if you look at the logs that are created on screen, there's no notice log. Um, if you look at the second one here where I called it with the, with the local, you'll see that it creates a notice log. When you call it with the local, you're telling Bro to load it with that, with that default startup script where it's specified. If you don't call it with the local, Bro is simply going to load everything in the base directory and not any of those selected policy scripts. So what you should see in this one is um, a pretty simple and quick demo. And we're, these will get more complicated as we, as we move down the uh, a line here. I just wanted to start uh, kind of simple. You should see that these are known bad things, right? Uh, uh, the DNS lookup to Team Comrie gets a hit, and, and you get your log notice right here. Okay, so does anybody uh, not get this output right here? David? Uh, did you have the, uh, the local on the end here? Uh, the no site local nets have been defined? Okay, so that's a, a warning. And it's just telling me that I, I have not specified what is my local network. When you're when you're uh, when you're programming uh, Bro scripts, a lot of times you'll want to know, you know, test a, test something and say, is this a local IP address or not? So in the default local file, uh, there is no local uh, IP address range uh, defined. In a later exercise here, it is going to be defined because in that script we're using that to to for a test. So do you see the notice log? Uh, you probably didn't have the, the local on the end. Okay, so that, that's a quick, easy one, all right? So let's go ahead and skip to the third one, which I really like uh, uh, this as a demo. Um, go ahead and, and uh, go back to the instructions here on the, on the main page. And um, I was shocked when I, when I found the sample. This is one of those, I've, I've got a couple examples like that where I've called Seth up and I'm like, how did you possibly plan for this? And he said, 
well, I didn't really. I'm actually somewhat surprised that it worked. Um, but uh, go ahead and replay this sample um, uh, through Bro uh, using the, 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 the secondary, you know, add the local onto the end because that's going to load a couple of signature files into your Bro install. And then I want you to, uh, to use the OODA process and say, first run a summary statistic and, and see, you know, this is, this is a useful kind of thing when you're navigating through Bro logs. When I sit down at a new sampler or a new compromise, I want to say, okay, what, 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 port, what host pairs are talking? What protocols are they speaking? And on what ports are they speaking? This is really trivial to do in ELSA. You know, this is this group by, you know, uh, service, group by destination port, group by origination port, and these things really kind of bubble to the surface. Um, I do use ELSA a lot for demonstrations, but I also think it is very important to be able to, you know, run these simple summary statistics on the, on the command line here. So, so what looks odd about this sample? Did anybody see anything that looks a little out of the ordinary? That's right, Zach. So there's HTTP being spoken on port 443. So that, to me, already is a, is a, is a good sign that there's something, something uh, odd. Now, uncommon port protocol pairs are definitely not unusual. You know, if you, if you start to do these things just on your general traffic in a whole, you're going to find things like open, open table speaking HTTP on port 52,176. Right? There's like a little XML API. You're going to find all kinds of devices that have these sorts of things. However, this is a, a, a pretty good indicator that in certain environments, if you know what's supposed to be on your network, this is a great way to get things to stand out, is to start to do these kind of summary statistics. For what it's worth, this whole less a log, use bro cut to grab specific fields, and then sort unique, and then sort by a unique and count, and then sort again. Is, uh, is that same technique, apply that to every log in your organization. Do that with your software log and you'll get a listing of all the distinct software, how many copies of it, all grouped by the most common to the least common usage. Um, that you can do that in you know, uh, connection, you can do that in HTTP, you can do that in host headers. So throughout the rest of the exercises, this is a good way to start. So has everybody gotten the, uh, replayed this, this sample through Bro? Somebody, want, somebody see what happened there? Can you walk through the top? So start at the connection log. So we, Zach, Zach commented that we saw HTTP on 443. So let's maybe look at the HTTP log. Did anybody see anything uh, weird in there? It, it actually looks somewhat normal to me. I mean, it, it looks like there, there's, um, based on what, it, what I'm seeing here, I see uh, uh, some application octet stream MIME types coming down. Um, but let, let's go ahead and look a little further on this on this one as we as we continue that sort of OODA process. Let's take a look at the notice log and see what see what actually fired here. And uh, I don't think that I installed Wireshark on these VMs, but if you open up Wireshark, you can also see this. This is a window shell being tunneled through HTTP. And uh, so as part of its dynamic protocol detection, Bro grabs this first is a thousand byte. 1,024 bytes, Seth. Uh, so I, I believe it's a, a 1,024 bytes, and it sort of holds us in this buffer. And there's this, there are these signature files that I wasn't even aware of that Bro had a framework for this until I saw this fire. Uh, and it caused me actually to go in and look at it and get all kinds of great examples for these things that are very easy and trivial to do in Bro that we, that we should be doing in Bro. Um, you, can look at, you can look into those signatures file, but we're actually going to create some signatures here in just a minute. And if you want to check the signatures.log, you can also see then that there's some more detail about the specific signature that fired. I didn't even know there was a signature.log until I saw it fire. It was one of those uh, uh, little heads up kind of things from uh, me personally. Did everybody get through that one right there as a, as a demo? Okay, good. Any, anybody having any trouble? Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And for this one, go ahead and pull up the uh, instructions and sort of walk your way through this, uh, this sample. So w when I was going through as you're, as you're, as you're doing that, what I, when I picked out these samples, what I was trying to do was to pick out a range of samples that basically illustrated a variety of detection techniques within Bro. I mean, everybody's excited about the atomic indicators with the uh, Intel stuff, and I am definitely excited about that. But I also think that, that you know, 
we should start a GitHub together of you know common uh, 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 you know user agents uh, that are bad because Bro can just we can just fire on these things all day long. And I know that there uh, Will's here. Um, I know that there are uh, other alternatives for that. You know, if you're running uh, Snort, I believe a lot of these rules are included by default in your build. But there may be an opportunity if you are in a uh, you know a contention period where you've you're hitting the ceiling in the number of rules you want to deploy to perhaps shift some of the load to Bro. Or if you or if you're just running Bro, I still think that all of these things are great to detect. I mean, Burp Suite tells you that it's Burp Suite. So does Web Scare. But I mean, a lot of the a lot of the tools just put these things out here. So. In these samples, I do want to be clear. These detection, the detection scripts that I've put out are quite possibly not the most optimal detections. I was really just trying to pick an example that had a bad, uh, in this case, it's a, a server header or that I thought was suspicious for this environment. Maybe if you have business interests or an office in Russia, you would see this character set very frequently on web pages. But to me personally, if I saw that in my network, I would be kind of concerned. My wife does not speak Russian. <laughs> Neither do I, for that matter. So I. I really think that these examples in particular are wonderful examples, though. And I think that if you were trying to introduce Bro to people in your office, that these walkthroughs are very helpful to help people understand the range of what is possible within Bro. So if we, if we walk down to the meat of this, uh, of this uh, alert that we're firing here, it's just this is definitely not the best way to implement this, right? We, what we would want to do in production is add the input uh, framework so that you can basically just maintain a list of you know, key value pairs of server, client, header, uh, the name, and then the value. Uh, and then every time you updated that list, it would be refreshed into Bro without restarting. Um, I really just, if you look at the uh, history on the GitHub, you can see that I was frantically typing away at these at like 5 o'clock this morning uh, to, to knock these out. Um, but I, I did have the samples already kind of set aside. It was just a matter of grinding out the work. So you can see we just do a, a, a quick match and we say, is the, is, the, is the name, we get an event when there's an HTTP header passed. So you know, in a typical transaction, you'll have half a dozen or a dozen of these headers on the server and the client side. And you can literally just hook right into them and just test them. And this is one of those things that I, I almost feel silly pointing out in Bro because it seems so obvious when you're doing it. But you know, the, uh, I don't know of a, of a place right now where I can go and just install this on my clusters. Uh, I, I, um, I personally, you know, on GitHub, I follow John and uh, Matthias and, uh, uh, and Seth and, and so forth. And if you, if you look, there is a lot of wonderful bro scripts just up on GitHub. Seth's credit card de de detection script is wonderful, and I wish I had a public example I could share, but I had a, a one fire last week on a fax that came in uh, to their fax server, was OCR'd, put in an email, and somebody had handwritten their credit card in big letters on page seven of this TIFF file. And the OCR had picked it up and bro credit, the credit card detection script fired on the, on the metadata in the TIFF file. I was, I was blown away. So the, the, the gentleman said that I could send him another test fax with a test number and I'll, I'll add that to my GitHub because I feel like that's one of those ones that for me personally, I was like, I, I, he's like, he's like, did you know this is gonna happen? I was like, I, I, I gotta call Seth. I mean, I was just, <laughs> just really impressed by that. So I'll, I'll get this one added in here because those are neat things I think that you can use in your organization to help convey the power of Bro. Uh, I suspect that that happens all the time at a lot of organizations, that there's those little things. And to be fair, in that example, the OCR was just as important as Bro was. But I still think that that was a pretty darn neat example. So again, in, in, this, in this example, I have this giant repository of 1,000 or you know, 2,000 malware samples uh, on my desk. I literally just searched through for weird user agents. So that was all I was looking for to demonstrate uh, in this example, is that this is just another tool that you have in your kit. So, so the ones we've looked at so far are, if Bro understands the protocol and is parsing it out and already has events for you, you can hook those events 
Okay, that's that's this one. In the in the previous one, it was uh, uh, number three was the 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 Windows shell tunnel over HTTP. So if if Bro is is firing on these known signatures within within acceptable protocols on your network, and then the first one, of course, was just a um, uh, a, a, a look up to an outside source. So let's go ahead and move on to the the fifth one. If everyone's ready, does anyone everyone need to slow down? We going too fast? Okay, so we can go ahead and move on to the fifth one. And this was this was a great one, and this one is actually courtesy of a uh, uh, John, which I know, I think that it's a. Uh, I think we should like get a cardboard cut out of you, and you should get to stand up here next to like when Seth and everybody talks, because a lot of the stuff, the amazing things that are shown in Bro, are things that I know you work on and that you've put out. So this was one of those ones that I found in your in your GitHub, and I've yet to see this one fire uh, here. Um, but this script is a uh, mining detector because as you know, if you look at the why machines are infected, there's all sorts of reasons. But a lot of times, it's simply just follow the money. So with the rise of the, you know, the, in the value of the cryptocurrency uh, Bitcoin, there's been a corresponding rise in malware agents that are deploying uh, detection scripts, or, uh, or they're deploying these uh, mining, mining scripts. And these guys are coders, so they're going to GitHub and they're using the same frameworks you know, across their various uh, botnets to build the Bitcoin mining things. And John wrote this amazing little uh, detection script. I'm really curious, since there's a supercomputer here, how many Bitcoins does, uh, does uh, Blue Gene or Super Blue Waters generate an hour? Does anybody know? Adam, can we get some funding for that? You here? <laughs> I, I was, I, I, when I look at what other people are doing, I wonder why they're doing it. So I, I, but I didn't want to ask you know, privately, because I feel like that would be like breaching your trust, but I could joke about it on stage. And then if you decide to tell me later, that somebody was doing that, I, it would be a good story. And if not, it's just a joke, right? <laughs> so if you, if, you, if you load that mining.bro script, t take a look at what John's doing there, because here, I, if somewhere on this page, I actually linked out the page to the signature framework in Bro. But it, it, this is my third Bro exchange that I've been to, and no one has talked about the signature framework. So that's why I thought that it was important that we at least said, hey, look at this. This has been in here for a while. And uh, you do see this in production fire. So make sure that you're at least looking for your signature.log. Or, or I, I, what I do personally is I just mine my notice logs. So if you look at the way this signature.log is laid out, I think that this the John's John's mining script is done the right way. You know, if you look how he has his signatures laid out, he's using a variety of techniques to limit the when the signatures are applied, uh, uh, and has some uh, uh, more complicated uh, regexes in here for doing some higher order detections. Uh, again. I was not even aware of the, the the existence of the framework until you know perhaps about a year ago. So since then, I've used this successfully a number of times. When we've had uh, one of the one of these later examples here, which was a C2 that Bro was not identifying, uh, to just write a quick detection script and then do a notice. And you're gonna you're gonna think that it's actually a really short uh, detection script, but I think it again just illustrates the the power uh, in these examples. Did everybody get get the mining example to work out? Did anybody have any trouble? Okay, so we are on number six here. Okay, so this is the, the zero access um, uh, uh, rootkit here. Um, and and this, is, this has been uh, circulated for quite some time. Um, and I, what I want you to do is um, I'd like someone to tell me what is being detected here. So take a look at the, you know, uh, the a solution zero access file. You know, look at that directory. What are those three files doing? What does the underscore underscore load file do? If you look how we call this, you know, when you're when you're writing these these kind of uh, uh, 
you know, little scripts, bro scripts, the way that, that you should distribute them is, you know, you put it in a subdirectory, and you put your underscore underscore load file in here, and that just recursively calls everything in that directory. So when you do a local include on your, if you add, you know, this, this folder to your local file, bro will look for that underscore underscore load file, then load the resources that are in there. So if you, if you uh, look here on the, the GitHub, if you follow the naked security, these are those reports that come up. And I, I'm, I'm, I can't be the only one that reads those. I really enjoy reading the, um, these big analysis that people do. Because a lot of times they'll put in there, uh, when in our analysis, we notice that uh, bytes five through eight, you know, we're always set to this on this protocol. And I don't see a whole lot of those things going into operation. And I know when uh, Seth did his GitHub APT1 script, that was, uh, that was really neat. But those reports are released on a near weekly frequency. And it, there's a ton of low hanging fruit there. I know that Will and the guys at Emerging Threats do an awesome job keeping snort rules up to date and SIGs out there. But again, there are, there, there are some times where I feel that it's not maybe, maybe not appropriate or you, or you can't deploy those things on snort. So it's useful to know and understand that you can deploy these things on your bro sensors. So if you, if you run this, uh, or if you look at the, uh, just the simple code here, uh, there's the, uh, the signature is just looking for that static string with a, with a regex. Okay, and then what we're doing is, is we're just first, it's standard practice to load in any dependencies that you have in your bro script. And then I'm loading in my signature file. And then I'm telling bro that to ignore that, that this file only should, should handle this signature, that the general signature matching engine should not fire on this script. That's what, that's what this redefined signatures ignore IDs is here. And then I'm simply you know, identifying clients and servers here. I have a, a, a regex here, and what I should do is I should actually have an add expire on the end here, because you don't want this alert to fire every every time this, this signature fires. But and I, I know I did that in, in the, uh, the Lurco example we're gonna do here in just a minute. So you would use that expire to say that, you know, to take it out automatically after 10, you know, 10 minutes after writing. And we'll look at that in the, in the Lurco one there. And then we're basically just testing it, and it's shorter to test for this, this signature than it is to write the notice, which is kind of neat. Yes? So if you, uh, if you check out the documentation online, there is a, there's a whole pattern, like a general signature pattern matcher. And they will you know, basically fire like a general signature fired alert. And this is just telling it that I'm going to handle this one you know, um, here in this script. Because in this case, it would probably make sense to sit down and go through the report and have like a general class called you know, uh, rat CNC or rat C2. And then the notice would be rat C2, zero access, rat C2, Lurco. You know, it, it, would, it would probably make sense, you know, and again, to have the signatures loaded out of a, at right, out, right out of the input framework. I, I love all the big examples. I love, I mean, I, I've watched Ashish's and Car talk like 20 times, I kid you not. I like literally transcribed the whole thing. You know, those are the guys that really made me realize what was possible in Bro. But I also, uh, I get a lot of mileage off doing little things in Bro. You know, when you're running Bro on big, complicated networks, it is almost like magic to be able to just deploy one of these things and say, oh, here's everybody that has zero access, right? Because you'll have environments that, for whatever reason, they are either, you know, they're all, you know, they've standardized on one sort of a problem or one <laughs> set of Java or one set of uh, a system, which to me means they all have the same problem. So they are all susceptible to the same kinds of, kinds of issues. So they get hit in a watering hole attack, and now they all have the same root kit. So if you need to deploy a quick signature to say, hey, can we just pick up that C2 traffic and know where it is? Can we push that out to our sensors? It's, it's, not, it's not even, it's not hard at all. It's actually really easy to do. And you know, there's no videos for it. There's, there is documentation. I didn't know it was there. So 
Uh, that's why I thought it was important to kind of run through these. So did everybody get zero access to fire off? Okay, for the, for the next one, purple uh, PHAR, purple haze, uh, uh, you need to download an additional uh, file. Um, so if you just follow this Dropbox link here and download this random file, it's safe, probably. Uh, uh, and then put that in your seven directory. Uh, go ahead and walk through that. Now this is a much larger file, so it will take bro, uh, you know, uh, 30 seconds or a minute to chew through it, depending on you, whether you got an SSD in your VM or not. So this is a good one about following the money. Um, and there are probably 50 different ways to detect this, this kind of behavior. You know, people constantly ask the question about anomaly detection in Bro. And if you're just looking at, at straight thresholds, you would see, you'll see in this PCAP, this guy just blows up HTTP traffic because the payload that is being delivered here basically executes a lot of click fraud. So there, there are probably a dozen ways to, to detect this one. Um, but I, I, looking through it, I, I thought this was a good example because the infection mechanism, the infection path is actually a vulnerable version, vulnerable version of Java downloading an executable. And I thought, hey, that would be a greater heuristic. I would like to know any time Java downloads a DOSX because that is never going to be a good thing, rarely, probably never. So what I did is I, I used this example to write that simple uh, signature. Uh, or heuristic, whatever you want to call it. I don't necessarily want to have that discussion. I don't really care, honestly. But it's a very useful alert. So what I want you to do is first look at that, look at that file and say how many, you know, with the new file framework, how many executables were downloaded? You know, grep through the log and get that answer. And if you look, there's actually a lot of, if you just look for application slash files, there's, a, there's quite a few of them. If you look for application slash DOS exec, there, there are less, if you, but we probably want to look for a couple different categories of Java downloads uh, uh, to know. But when you get over to the code, you're going to be phenomenally impressed appointment, disappointed and impressed at the same time because it's neat that it works and it's one line, or it's like one line of code to fire that, you know, to detect that. And I thought that was a really, really powerful example because it, it's, it's detect this, this somewhat specific behavior in a very general way and give you some information about it. I wouldn't even pin this to a specific version of Java or a specific version of less. I would say anytime, even, even on my current patch Java, anytime my Java downloads uh, an executable, that's probably a good thing to know about. So here is, here is this amazing little piece of code here, right? This is, this, is, this is not production quality right here. You know, this should probably all be wrapped up in a notice. What I, what I just told it to do was, um, uh, if we have the user agent, you see I have this little question mark right here. This is, this is the test operator. It says, hey, has the user agent field been set yet, right? And if it has, has do, we, do we have the MIME type set yet? And is this regex of Java in the user agent, okay? If it is, then let's look at the, the MIME types of the files. Now, I have to use this for loop here. There was a question the other day about for loops because if you look at the data type for a MIME type, it's a vector because in a transfer, there can be multiple, I assume multiple files transferred, Seth? Yeah, and, and you would get, this field would, could be returned as an array in your bro logs. Typically, you're probably only gonna see one value here, but, but we, I did wanna you know, try to show you the right way to do it. So for each M, uh, and that was, that was my abbreviation for MIME type, that you just dynamically create that variable on the fly, you say, for each one of these things in this MIME types field, if it's a DOS exec, then just print it, just print it to screen. And if you compare the analysis of the log files that you performed just a second ago to the results here, you'll see that there are three DOS execs downloaded, and there are three, uh, uh, the three full connection records printed out. Now, what, what should probably be done there is that there should be a little notice event, and you would shoot it out, so you would basically, you know, I try to send everything to my notice log, because that's the first thing I look at. That, that summary statistic, that show me all the notices, I do, I do, show me all the notices, show me the notes, you know, sort, unique, show me again. So that gives me a count of all of, all of my notices 
uh, uh, sorted out to screen. And I can see right away because you'll you'll have like a lot of application downloads or what you know these big things, and then you'll have these edge cases. And I usually start at the the fewer things first. I, if I see a credit card detection fire, I go there first, and that's the first thing I look at because to me that that that's a potentially bigger problem if credit cards have been detected out in the. Uh, it depends on the customer's network, of course. So there is certainly a lot of room for improvement in, in each of these examples. Um, and when we get down to uh, Lurco, uh, I, which is um, a rebrand of the Ghost Rat, um, I, I, it's, it's different because the previous example was TCP C2, and this one is UDP C2, or maybe I have that backwards. One, one is one, one is the other. But I, I wanted to demonstrate both of them for you to say that, look, you know, these are wildly different things uh, uh, in, de in detail, but the general approach for the problem is very simple and it works. These things fire off. So I know that this demonstration was not as mind-blowing as a lot of the other ones out there. However, with the, with the continuum of new faces in the community, I think that it is very important that every Bro event includes a variety of material. Because uh, I, 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 I did have a couple of people tell me that this was the first time that they actually were, you know, had replayed Bro on the command line with PCAPs. And so I think that it's important to learn about all these big things and the direction that we're heading and you know, these future file uh, analyzers. And Vlad, I love your talk about writing analyzers. And I know not everybody's going to do that, that there needs to be some of this operational kind of stuff that's, uh, that's in there. So were there any questions? I think this was a pretty straightforward demonstration and exercises. OK, well, thank you guys very much for your time. I appreciate it.